we're going to be going in and out of buildings in the brewery, uh, and then hopefully, and hopefully we can answer questions when we get to the Miller Inn. Uh, we are going to go through three uh, three areas of the brewery. We're going to go into uh, the brew house, go into packaging, and then we're going to also go into our shipping and distribution area, and then finish up, of course, at the uh, at the Miller Inn. How many people just came for the beer? So yeah, we will go to the Miller Inn. We'll do a little sampling over there, and then and then actually take it to our visitor center too. So if you do want to, I don't get any commission for this, but if you want to buy something at the visitor center, then you know that gives you an opportunity to buy something, and you'll get a discount over there also. What to look for when you're out there? Um, you know, certainly, you know, from a 5S standpoint, we have many opportunities, but we've, we've made some efforts to try to make waste visual. Uh, we tried to give the operators a tremendous amount of data and feedback so that they can make good decisions from a short interval control standpoint and respond if their process is out of, out of control or, or their, the conditions are abnormal. And then uh, from an asset care standpoint and how we take care of our equipment, and, and Greg can uh, certainly speak to this as well, uh, we've invested a lot in the training and upskilling of our people so that um, maybe you know 30 years ago somebody that came in would have just been asked to feed lids, feed crowns, feed cartons. Now we're asking them to do a lot of their own maintenance up to and including you know part replacement um, and repairing of basic components. Uh, and then on top of that we're asking our maintenance people to, to contribute to their teams by operating the equipment more so that they can see firsthand some of the problems that the operators deal with on a daily basis uh, and, and do some proactive work and higher level problem solving and try and engage them more in the operation uh, proactively. Uh, and then finally, I, the other focus I wanted to highlight is, as part of our journey is really driving quality to the source. So in the past where we may have had a laboratory technician that was responsible for doing a lot of the quality checks and really kind of inspecting in quality, we're trying to eliminate a lot of the wasted motion and wasted handling of product and, and the time that it takes to detect and correct by driving quality checks to the people that are running the equipment. So the filler operator monitoring their own oxygen levels, monitoring their own critical to quality characteristics, fill levels, things like that, to make sure that uh, if, there's, if their process is out of control, they can react quickly, um, respond, correct it, make sure it's, it's within spec, you know, contain any bad product if that were to happen, things like that. So you'll see a lot of that going on in packaging. You'll see um, in brewing, you'll just kind of get a feel for our brew house, I think, um, and, and we'll kind of give you an overview of the process. And then over in shipping, on the palletizers, uh, you'll see our warehouse and the way our, our the automated nature that, that we load up our product onto pallets. And uh, just keep in mind, you know, from a lean perspective, you see that warehouse full of product, that'll all be gone in about a day and a half. We have about a day and a half of finished goods in our warehouse. Uh, so, any questions before we hit the floor? We'll have some time, you know, maybe for questions after, you know, when we're in the Miller Inn. So, uh, I mean, it's going to yeah. be a big group anyway. Yeah. yeah, speaking of that, just one final thought, and nothing's more important to us than everybody in this room getting through the day safely and as well as our employees. So uh, please stay close to uh, the leaders of your tours. Um, walk where we walk. It could be slippery, especially um, in the bottle line area. There could be glass on the floor. Um, so just be aware of your surroundings. Um, everybody knows you're coming, so um, hopefully everybody will be highly sensitive to the fact that we're going to have large groups of people walking in an area where they're not used to them. But uh, just be aware and take responsibility for your own safety. And don't touch anything unless it's handed to you, those types of things, <laughs> common sense stuff. All right. And then when, when we get you across State Street, obviously that's a hazard that we deal with every day. We're going to have to cross State Street as part of the tour. So be aware that the, the drivers on State Street don't always respect uh, the pedestrians. <laughs>
barley is cooled, and it's sent into a drying apparatus called we'll the kiln. There you go. This is caramel malt. And the kiln, where we use different temperatures and times and moisture contents, will develop different types of flavors in the malt. The pale malt that's going around is a basic stuff. You can taste that. It's like a malt milk wall, a malt milk shape. That's what it is. That's where that ingredient comes from. Caramel malt is dried under some moisture conditions and it develops a coffee, almost a coffee type of flavor. Uh, the next one I've got here is uh, something called chocolate malt.
obvious in the case of first shift, you're going to say, okay, why is there a gap difference there? Now, the other piece of this is we do do, we tend to do more maintenance work on first shift, so that does impact as well. We have more resources on first shift than on the off shift. Because we have our maintenance. So maintenance call goes into your OE back. No, okay. no, but we have more resources on first shift, so we tend to take the line. Let's, because we have a dual back end, we may decide to take down one drop packer. So you're still running the other packer and running one of the two drop packers. We take down one packer, and because we have more resources on days, we tend to do more of that maintenance work on first shift. What's your gap list versus CI to do oh, list? Yeah, I kind of walked by that quickly. Actually, um, this has actually been very, very successful for us, I think. Um, we have what we call a gap list, so if any of the people on the team um, during the during the level one meeting, if they have an issue or something that they want to get fixed, they raise it and we and we bring it up and write it on the gap list. It might then get created into a work order or it gets it's assigned to somebody else. This is actually what we call a continuous improvement list. We used to have a gap list of what we call the open items list. So if it hit, up, hit the gap list, didn't get corrected within an X amount of time, then it rolled over and it actually went on the open items list. We did away with that. We did we created a continuous improvement list which is focused just on those items that are going to drive or improve the process. So, and this is obviously, we, we started training this somewhat recently, actually in January, and a lot of things on, on 20 lines specifically, um, the operators and the crafts have a lot of really neat ideas, but they're a little bit costly. So because it's the end of the fiscal year, we have to kind of monitor the budget and make sure that we can fit these in, or we may have to go in and ask for capital dollars to get some of the items done. But the idea is we want to drive continuous improvement always, so we want to have a separate, a separate list and a separate, it's more or less a separate focus so that we can track those specific items. So the gap's not No, they get moved over to, if it's specifically an improvement, we'll add it onto the improvement list. Even though we drive both of them, we're just putting a little bit more emphasis on the back, uh, on the improvement side of things, so. Well, what's an example of a gap that's not um, Cause and effect one. Well, okay. Let's say maybe the phone at the case depot. This is a little kind of a lame one, but okay. phone at the case depot doesn't work, and they they need to call dispatch to get more loads in. Phone doesn't work. They'll add it on there, so then the team leader would then go and go ahead and call the phone company and try to get that fixed for them. Um, you know, maybe maybe the labeler. I was going to say guard door, but that usually that'll get fixed like right away. A lot of times, if there's something that somebody brings up that's short term that they can fix out there. Operator wants a fan off their, their fan stop working, add that to the list. Or just short term, quick things that they can fix right there on the spot. Some of the guys will bring something up, they might be out on the line and towards the end of their shift, they might have maybe forgot to pass something on and they'll bring it up in the meeting and then we can assign it to the craft that's in the room right away and have them go up there and fix it. So it's the CI list maybe a better description of what's really improved for action? Um, it's really more, um, again, it's it's, it's not, it's not something like, like a maintenance item that you would fix, just a routine it's maintenance. It's an, it's an improvement to the line. Let's say, let me, I'll give you an example. Um, we have some problems, I'll, we actually have, the boxes come into two separate lanes and there's like a swing gate that feeds it into each of the drop packers and it kind of tries to maintain that population. That, that gate is always causing one of the cases to hang up in there. So the, um, the machinist on third ship came up with an idea to put an arm and kind of drive or kind of um, guide that case in a little bit better. So he put it on the improvement list and then he got assigned that task and then he came up with an idea. He got it working. Now the operators, because the way we're configured, the operators have to walk all the way around to be able to get it. It's a really big pain and we lose a lot. We, we can lose like five to ten minutes of downtime just having them walk around clear that case jam. So he's now fixed it made an improvement so that now that doesn't happen anymore and the operators are obviously happy. Yeah. So. We hold about 1.2 to one and a half days of the So what you uh, see here today turns at that 1.2 to one and a half days. really is the lone dog uh, for uh, the Milwaukee Brewery's heritage here. We do packs, splits, flats, and you see a number of other uh, Milwaukee brands that were uh, famous here. You know that it's quite clear. Yeah.